John, so far, I know that my great-great-grandmother was called Margaret Cohen and she was born in Dublin. OK, well, that's, that's a great start. Here's the record of the marriage of her parents. So, on the 22nd day of October 1861, Michael Cohen married Harriet Fowler. If you look at the surnames there, Kerwin and Fowler, yeah. um, they're... Kerwin is a, a, a typical Irish, Gaelic-Irish surname. Comes from O'Kir Duan, meaning grandson of the, the dark-haired fellow. OK, so okay. It's, it's a good, a good Gaelic-Irish Irish name. name. That's, that's a bullseye for, for Gaelic there. OK. All right? Um, whereas okay, Fowler is, is obviously an English surname. Eastenders, okay. yep. right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so are we mixing here? I think we are. He's from a Catholic background and she's from a Protestant background. That, that's what I would read it as. OK. I think if you see as well, the marriage is taking place in the registrar's office. Yeah. And the reason for a registrar's office marriage or registry office marriage is, at this period at least, almost always because it's a mixed marriage. My, my mum is, is Catholic and my dad is Church of England, but they married and, yeah. and I don't think that was ever a problem, but yeah. that was in the 60s. Yeah. Um, how would it have been looked on in 1861? It would have been um, hard. They were going against his church and yeah. her church. Yeah. This is almost certainly a love match. This is not uh, an arranged marriage, and that's what this looks like to me. Father's name. Oh, so his dad's name was Michael Cohen yes, as well. Uh, the groom's father. OK. And he was a marble mason. Mm -hmm. And Harriet's father was Richard Fowler, and he was a gentleman. What, what does it mean if your rank or professional is a gentleman? The idea is that a gentleman doesn't have to work for his living, oh, as it okay. were. Do you know anything else about Richard Fowler, gentleman? Um, actually, I found a marriage announcement in the Leinster Express newspaper from 1835, and here it is. 1835. In Dublin, Richard Fowler, Esquire of Dunlavin, County Wicklow, to Harriet, so... Richard Fowler was an esquire mm -hmm. of Dunlavin. What does that actually mean? I mean, I know of it and I've heard of it, but... Well, esquire there is interesting. He's, he's a gentleman in her marriage record. Yeah. And he's an esquire at the time of his own marriage. Esquire was not exactly a, a precise label. In, in theory, it means that he um, had property, that he, he was part of the landed gentry, as it were. So do you know what type of land he had or, or how much or how little? I found something here in the Registry of Deeds. I haven't covered um, marriage articles of Richard's parents. So let me just go and get that for you now. OK, thank you. These books are absolutely incredible. So Terrified to go anywhere near them. This book is probably 250 years old. Maybe a bit more. John, don't rip it. <laughs> All right. Now. Right. What in the world does that say? <laughs> <laughs> As it so happens, oh, we have a transcript. Oh, good. <laughs> OK. OK. And here you are. Marriage settlement, 1790. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> Made it to 1700s, yay. Yeah. Um, what is a marriage settlement? It's an agreement made between two parties, um, two families, who are going to marry into each other. OK. okay. Um, it's made between, you can see, Richard Fowler. Yeah. That's Richard Fowler Sr. Yeah. Richard Fowler and Abigail Fowler, formerly Alcock. So these are my five-time great-grandparents. Great, 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 great grandparents OK. Part of the lands of... How do you pronounce that? Boherboy. Boherboy. Commonly called the Boggy Meadow. Was it really boggy? My, I would imagine <laughs> probably was. Got to get his name from somewhere, yeah, okay. right? In the whole 43 acres. So 43 acres is what they have? It's, it's a middling size holding. Um, it, it sounds a lot. It Maybe to our to, ears. To, to us, yeah. yeah. But, but, I mean, for example, the, the major landowner in the area would have had tens of thousands of acres owned outright. Right, OK. So he's doing all right? He's doing all right, but not spectacular. He's not flying high. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Exactly. Emma has discovered that her five times great-grandfather, Richard Fowler Sr., was a Protestant landholder from the town of Dunlavin at the end of the 18th century. 
At the time, fewer than 5,000 Protestant families owned nearly all of the land in Ireland. The vast majority of the population were Catholic, but they had been excluded from land ownership. Most worked as labourers for landholders like Richard Fowler. And um, what was Dunlavin like at the end of the 1700s? It was a small country town about 40 miles south of Dublin. Um, it was quite a, a, a particular place in that it was majority Protestant. OK. okay? The, the fact that it was majority Protestant made it stand out in this, as this island in a sea of Catholicism right. in, in, at the end of the, the 18th were century. They, were they not very well liked? There was a certain amount of sectarian tension, put it like that. Should oh, that... I go to Dunlavin? Yes, is the short answer. <laughs>